people are people. Yeah. You have people who don't like non-Japanese uh, people living here, let alone being in entertainment yes, and sir. being famous to boot. Oh man, I've had some really bad altercations and interactions with people who were just not good. Welcome to another episode of The Melanated Fuzz. My name is Ranzo and today I'm joined by Dante Carver, right? Actor, producer, and just multifaceted, multi-talented human being in thank, Tokyo, thank Japan. <laughs> right? Good to be here. Good to be here. All right. Thanks, Thanks. for coming on. Everybody. So <clears throat> we're gonna dive into Dante's story right now. なんですか so Dante, yes, you are a famous actor in Japan, of course. And back in, I, I, um, I saw this thing that said back in 2008, you were the most famous or most popular TV personality in Japan. Uh, yeah, so that's called um, the ACC Awards. Basically, what they do is fans can nominate and actually vote on the most popular commercial talent. Um, they have male category, female category, and the person that had it for eight years running uh, was from the big pop group that recently disbanded called SMAP. Okay. Uh, Kimutaku. He had it for eight years, so 2008, 2009, um, I was voted and won uh, the award for that. How did that feel? Like, how was that? Like, when my agent at the time told me about it, I actually didn't really fully grasp how big it was okay. because it's like, oh, okay, it's kind of like a local thing. And she's like, no, it's a national thing. And you're the, f f to her understanding, I was the first non Japanese person that it happened to. Okay. And especially dethroning the person that had it because he's a big deal eight years in a row he yeah he won. had it eight years in a row no wow. one had it that long wow uh, apparently eight years in a row and uh i well you know thankful grateful that people liked me and the content that i was doing at the time and things of nature and i got voted and won two years in a row that was cool it was really cool wow so i'd say the first year it didn't really sink in until I was at the award ceremony, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, oh wow, that's kind of a big thing. Cool, cool. And, and because I was just trying to figure things out still. Mm -hmm. You know, I had been in the business here for at least two and a half, three years by that okay. point, mm -hmm. but things were still kind of fresh because there's a big, there's a lot of changes going on and, uh, and evolution in the industry at the time. So when I started, there was uh, the company Vodafone, which still exists in Europe, mm -hmm. um, but that was when they were rebranding into SoftBank here in Japan. Okay. Um, and during that time, it was like rebranding, need to rebrand, need to expand. So lots of, hey, where do you want to go? And it's like, uh, I don't know, how about this place? Because I hadn't been anywhere. So I just picked random places and a lot of those places ended up being where they'd open up a new store, have some type of live event, meeting the fans, Signing sessions, shaking hands, pictures, that kind of stuff. It was mm -hmm. fun. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning, right? So yeah. like, so why Japan and why acting in Japan? Okay. Um, as a child, I had always wanted to do entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I was acting and modeling since I was four. Um, you know, stage stuff, bit pieces here and there, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, in Europe and the U.S. Then when it came to Japan, I had, like, as I mentioned, Europe, had been in... Europe or the US for most of my life and it's like never been Asian mm -hmm. really big into martial arts love action um, Power Rangers Kamen Rider all that kind of stuff just they hit a nerve with me okay I didn't see anybody doing that who looked like me mm -hmm. in Japan mm. so I was like hey let me study come over here and do it so the original plan was to go to China study for a year year and a half 
um, Kung Fu and then come here to get into action and stunt work. Okay. And uh, things went in many different directions. It got canceled, so I couldn't go to China. And my Japanese friends from Universal were like, hey, why don't you just come visit us for a month or two and figure things out. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And I got scouted by four agencies the first week I was here. Okay. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something here, but still I don't know the language, don't know the country. To, uh, had some family things going on with my grandfather and so on back home. Let me take a beat and come back. Okay. So that's basically what I did. And when I got back here, I kind of started putting out feelers. Okay, well, what agencies are good or what can I do, what can't I do, that kind of stuff. Because again, like I mentioned, I didn't speak the language. It was a challenge because I ended up doing a lot of auditioning and stuff like that. But, you know, 100 and, you know, 20, 23 auditions or whatever that. Wait, 100 and how much? Yeah. You I did 100 that, plus or, uh, 100, auditions. 120, 23 auditions total, whereas, like, I didn't get it. Wow. For a number of reasons. You know, okay. this is over a good nine month period. Okay. You know, I would get little bit jobs and bit work, mm -hmm. but not what I really wanted. Mm -hmm. And nothing really contracted. So it's like, without a contract, it makes living a little difficult. Okay. Because you're living basically from paycheck to paycheck. Mm. And the way you're paid here is very different, even now, than it is, say, in the U.S. Okay. So your pay scale is lower, <clears throat> definitely. And then also when it comes time to pay you for transportation, like say if I take the bullet train, because I was in Kansai, mm -hmm. um, to Tokyo, at that time it was like uh, 120 bucks. So I say, oh, hey, you know, thanks for coming to the audition or thanks for your work, whatever. Here's 50 bucks for transportation. That doesn't what, cover it. It doesn't cover it. <laughs> so it's like, okay, well, now what? Mm -hmm. So when I did actually get asked to do the first commercial, which was for Vodafone at the time, I was um, still doing modeling work, stuff like that. I had, matter of fact, I had a billboard here in Tokyo okay. uh, for Lifeguard. And, you know, it's the typical, I'm in sportswear and I'm in a, you know, track pose and that was basically about it. Mm -hmm. But when I got contracted, it was because they had asked me to come back for the second commercial. The first commercial left me broke. Okay. Like 564 yen in my bank account broke. Wow. So for those who don't know, if you're looking at one-to-one, -one, it's about less than $6 in my bank account because everything that I was paying for was out of pocket. Mm. So that was hard. And it was one of those where, should I stay? Should I go back home? Because, I mean, I had been knocking on doors for a while. Okay. And my parents were like... 100 plus auditions, man. That's, yeah. Wow. Had a notebook that uh, had all the auditions and stuff that I went through. Mm -hmm. And any producer or casting director that I talked to that was willing to give me information. It's like, hey, you know, you know, how come I didn't get it? Or... Um, you know, what was the the issues or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it'd be something as simple as like too tall, too short, wow. too big, too small, too dark, too light. The too dark one I thought was interesting because, you know, back in the States, people don't look at me as being dark skinned. Yeah. But here, they're like, oh, you're, you're so dark. And I'm like, in comparison I, I guess, to who? I, I, guess <laughs> I have blinders on or a comparison. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to who? Yeah. So it's like, you know, basically it's their way of saying not what they're looking for. And okay. that's fine. You know, heartbreaking as it is, as part of the entertainment business. Wasn't fun, but definitely a learning experience. What kept you going? Um, not wanting to fail. Okay. At not trying. Mm. So I'm a big I'm a big believer in you give it everything, it may not work out, you still get something from it. Okay. You still learn something. Mm -hmm. And also because, you know, there's there's many little things, but I remember when I came over, um, there were some people that were around me who were very, who were naysayers. Okay. Haters, negative, and some of them downright racist. And they're like, well, you can't do it. You, you can't do acting and things in Japan. I'm like, well, why not? It's like, well, look at you, you're black. Wow. And I'm like, so that's a negative thing? Or like, what's up? Well, like, you don't speak the language, you're black. And, you know, they just, the way they were putting it, they all were pushing it as a complete negative aspect of being who I am. Yeah. And that's the complete opposite of who I am. So I was determined to 
not so much just prove to them, but prove to myself that not only are they incorrect, but it shouldn't matter what your skin color is. You should be able to do whatever it is you set out to do. Mm -hmm. There will be hurdles. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. But you can't let someone stop you from doing what you're doing just because you look different. Yeah. And, you know, my parents raised me like that. And I try to not just remind myself of that when things get difficult, but when I'm talking to other people, to try and instill that into them. Because, yes, we may look differently because we're from different backgrounds, but at the end of the day, we're the same. We wake up the same, we sleep the same, we eat, Yep. We, we live, we love, we cry, we laugh, whatever. We may speak different languages, but I mean, you're still a person. Indeed. So. So when did the big break come? Like the big break, right? So that SoftBank commercial, like the what soft, was the first thing? The SoftBank commercial, I'd say that the first big break was actually having my face in Shibuya. Okay. And that was on the billboard. Because I, I had a, it sounds cheesy, but, you know, it is what it is. At that time, I had a list of things that I had to achieve or try to achieve or as close to it as possible for mm-hmm. myself. Okay. And then on the other side, it was like, okay, I want to get a contract with an agency and or a sponsor because that's where your careers start and or that's where actual money is to survive. So I'd say the biggest break was definitely when I landed the uh, soft bank contract because it gave me a chance to meet people, see more of the country, which mm-hmm. is something I really wanted to do but just didn't have the money yeah. for it. And uh, it also gave me a chance to see how things are on the, in, within the Japanese entertainment business, both positive and negative because mm-hmm. you know entertainment is entertainment. There's a shady side to everything. Business is business. Mm-hmm. But learning that and still learning but learning it at that time really helped me see through a lot of things that I needed to see but was blinded by ooh the pizzazz of oh I got this I got that okay so you know the glitter and the glam of oh you've got this job or you did that still a job you, you still have to pros and cons yeah definitely definitely pros and cons like being a non-Japanese actor or Mm -hmm. in you know Japanese uh, productions also like to use the word talent and there's a difference between actors and talent okay Um, talent depending on the production they look at it as all-inclusive so maybe you do some acting maybe you do some modeling you know whatever Mm -hmm. so they just say talent but you'll have someone who maybe they are good at something but they're not into acting but they'll still use the same terminology. Okay. There's a lot of actors that don't like being called talent oh. because they look at it as downgrade. It's like, look, I actually practice. I actually, you know, try and hone my skills and my craft because that's what I do. Mm-hmm. Where you can have someone where in the in the under the country they'll say maybe oh that person doesn't have any talent, but in Japan they have a talent for something. Okay. When you mm-hmm. went to the Vodafone uh, commercial, the, that I gig- was an extra. Okay, so talk about that because I know sure. that's how you transitioned into... Uh, yeah, okay, mm-hmm. so had been trying to get into um, television and film here in Japan since the beginning because I wanted to do Kamen Rider or Power Rangers because, like I mentioned at the beginning, no one had really done that. Okay. So um, going to different agencies, not being signed to one, it was freelance, and I just so happened to get picked up because of the picture selection. So. The director saw my picture, liked my name, and he was like, hey, uh, ask this person to come and this person, that person. So two or three people got selected, and we ended up going uh, onto production as extra. So, you know, I'm sitting in the back, minding my business, warm break, and, you know, talking, having jokes and whatever. Yeah. The director hears me speaking with a little bit of Japanese I spoke at the time. And I was speaking in Kansai band at the time because that's where I lived. And he's like, hey, hey, come here. Can you say these lines? And that was basically when it was like, hey, Sumasen, Kitamasen Desta, and uh, Yosogai Desta. Because when I started, that was the Yosogai series, where okay. now it's the um, the White Family series. Okay. Which is very different. Explanation later. But for the most part, it ended up being what it was, where it's like he heard me, he liked it. I tested, and 
people in the head office liked it. So like, hey, can you have them come back next week for a follow up commercial? Yeah. I was like, I'm not a contractor or anything like that, but a follow up commercial means extra money in my pocket. So yeah, I'm free. So I was already in Tokyo anyway, I filmed it, and in the middle of filming, you know, in Japan, when they have something important to tell you, when someone comes up to you and they just go tap, do like this to you, yeah, it's one of two things. They're gonna tell you something really cool or really bad. Okay. Because when they come up and tap you, because stateside we do like this. Yeah. Underhand, overhand in Japan, and it's like, oh, what happened? Something's wrong. It's like, hey, we want to talk to you. Would you? Would you have any interest in being exclusive with Softbank? I'm like, yes. <laughs> yes. Where do I sign? <laughs> you know, and it's not that I wanted to just jump at the first thing available. Yeah. But it felt like the right time. And uh, okay. it also, you know, outside of not having any money, it was, hey, I had a good working experience so far with these people. Mm-hmm. Let me see where it goes. Okay. And there weren't many people in Japan, especially of color, doing anything like it. So it's yeah. like, maybe it's my time to try it and see how it goes. So I said yes. Okay. At the same time, that week, what many people don't know is I actually auditioned for Kurata Studio, which is uh, Kurata Studios, which is a uh, action and stunt company. Mm-hmm. So they do all the Power Rangers and um, Super Sentai and uh, Kamen Rider movies or whatever at the time, and I passed. Okay. So it's like, oh man, now's my chance. But they were what I really appreciate about them is like, look, being honest, you don't look Japanese, you don't speak the language yet, so we can't guarantee that you're going to get a speaking and or leading role, no okay. matter how good your action is. We can't guarantee because no one had done it and. You have skills that you need to build first. Okay. Um, you might be an extra. You might be in costume the whole time, but you'll still be able to to learn and progress. And we'll see how it goes. We can't guarantee it. Mm. And at first, I was frustrated. And then it was like, actually, I'm really glad they said that. And they were awesome because they were like, we don't want to waste your time. Mm. We like you, and we like what we see. But we also need you to understand everything that's going on. It's like, okay, cool. And because I got the contract with SoftBank, I was like, this is guaranteed. And I could progress in the entertainment business and go from there. Yeah. And then come back to it if that's what God has planned. Yeah. So, signed. All right, nice. A very long loop, but yeah, that's where we're at. <laughs> okay, so, so when you, got, when you get the, uh, got the SoftBank gig, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so for those of you guys who don't know, like... Explain to them what the gig was, ah, okay. and also how you felt once you started seeing yourself on TV, and what the response was from Japanese people and the foreign community as well. Sure, sure. So, I'm one of those people where after I film a project, I don't like looking at it. Okay. I don't like to see myself. Okay. Um, it's nice to see it maybe once if we're in the middle of filming, and you get to look at the dailies, and it's like, oh, can we, can we do that scene again? Mm-hmm. and maybe give a different take or something like that, okay, that's fine. But once the project's done, I don't like to see it because I find that I start breaking down. It's like, ah, oh, I wish they used the other cut or, ah, oh, I should have done this. Yeah. And it's it becomes a, a lesson in fertility because it's, it's not you. It's mm. what the director wants. Mm. So once it's done, given you may not like everything that you do, but every project is basically based on that the artist's interpretation, which is the director mm-hmm. or that client. So if that's what they want and you did it to the best of your ability, don't touch and let it and move on. So I don't like seeing myself. Just putting that out there, footnote. But um, doing the commercials, it was always a surprise because, uh, uh, and going back, for those that don't know, Bank is one of the largest cell phone companies here in Japan. Um, and now they're more than just uh, mobile devices and services. But when they started, it was kind of like that. Now they're into, you know, electricity and gas and all that kind of stuff. But anyways, when I started, no one on TV was like me mm-hmm. um, at the time. The few people that were, were doing more of like a comedy skits and slapstick stuff 
like that, which I'm like, I don't want to have anything to do with because I have this fear of type, uh, typecasting. Okay. But doing the commercials and going around was absolutely amazing because it's what, hey, soft make show. <laughs> uh, it's what I had started out for. I wanted to go in, put smiles on people's faces. Um, you know, if it's something that makes people cry but makes them feel something, that's what I got into the acting business for. Okay. Because that's how I felt and that's what I see when I look at people like Denzel Washington and uh, Will Smith, Lawrence Fishburne. You know, growing up and seeing people like that, that's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and Bruce Lee, because he had a huge impact on me, given before my time, but growing up watching Bruce Lee and other well, Kung Fu theater with my mom, it just, it just hits a nerve a certain way. So being able to walk around and people be like, hey, Dante, good job, or at that time, um, uh, Yo Soul Guy, because that was the name of the character. Mm -hmm. And the character's name is meaning to do something unexpected, but also in a witty or smart way. Okay. So it's kind of like a play on words. I love that character because it was always different. They give me a script and it's like, hey, this is what you're doing. And I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm fighting a giant octopus. <laughs> uh, okay, whatever, sure. I'm in space. I'm, you know, it's always something different and, and fresh. So I enjoyed that because it wasn't so much just that the focus was me. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something somewhat challenging because every other project I was doing, whether it be a variety TV show, drama, whatever, the scripts somewhat seem to rotate around the same atmosphere. Okay. So I enjoyed the variety of scripts through those interactions and uh, production for SoftBank in general. And starting to build recognition okay. in Japan, um, not just for the character, but also as myself, people started to recognize me for who I am as opposed to just the character that I'm portraying yeah. in the commercials. And given that became a very, very strong brand. And like I said, pros and cons, <laughs> there are pros and cons to that because inadvertently I ended up getting typecast. Okay. Because I would go to a, uh, a movie set and it's like, okay, here's your script, your character and things of that nature. And that setup is completely different from being overseas. And uh, they're like, hey, can we, can we put glasses on him or can we put him in a suit? That kind of thing. And that's actually how my character looked in the commercials. Mm -hmm. You know, the, f the first time or the second time, it's like, uh, okay, I get it. It's, they want to use something that gives them a strong brand for when they promote it. Cool. Uh, it, it wore old really quick. Mm. And I got it to where it's like in my contract. Yeah, I'm not doing that. If the character in your story is made that way, I'm still going to make or do something, do something and make the character look different enough to where it's like, oh, that's Onichan from SoftBank. Or, or, you know, because that's not fun for the actor. Yeah. There's no, there's no growth. There's no expectation. It's just like, oh, you know, it's the same stuff. But also keeping in mind that I'm also very grateful for the opportunities that I was given. And I love the, the fan interaction and the support and things of that nature. That's always good. But sometimes you do have to draw a line. Otherwise, you don't learn anything. People only see you as a certain character. <laughs> um, you know, if, for example, if... I were cast as uh, Superman or, you know, any other superhero and was doing that for like a decade. Okay, I get that. I have no problem with that because that's what I'm set out to do. Okay. And that's that's my next goal. Not so much that it has to be a decade, but I would love, would give anything to be in a uh, superhero franchise, whether it's a television or film. That's Even if it meant going back to America? Oh, definitely. Yeah? You know, Japan is my my base at the moment, but if I have work that sends me outside this country, I have no problem doing it. I mean, I've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. But if America's like, hey, look, we've got this TV series, we want to cast you, but you're, you know, in Tokyo right now, it's like, well, time to start searching for an apartment or a house. Mm -hmm. And I'll come back, you know, just set the schedule up to where if I have work here, 
come here, do it, and go back, or postpone it. Whatever needs to be done schedule-wise, I don't care. Okay. So that is my goal. My and I don't like to say goal because goals sound limiting, mm -hmm. and I don't want to limit myself. What about like? Uh well, not to be negative, but anything no, no, okay. in terms of like doing the soft band commercial, yeah. uh, being a face, right? Being all over being, Japan. Yeah. Were there any talks about you being black and, and you know, being, gi oh, being given so much publicity? What was that like? Well, yeah, I mean, I've dealt with uh, the negative side of that. You know, it's not that every Japanese person is racist or negative to get uh, to begin with, to begin with mm -hmm. or to other cultures. But yeah, you know, like I mentioned in the beginning, people are people. Yeah. You have people who don't like non-Japanese uh, people living here, let alone being in entertainment. Yes, and sir. being famous to boot, oh man, I've had some really bad altercations and interactions with people who were just not good. Okay. You know? um, one of them was with someone who was in a high position had lost the position i ended up taking that spot and they were quite negative to me when they first met me and i'm like i don't get it why and they were negative to me when we first met and i was like why are you like that and it's like because you're not japanese and it's like should matter should matter if everyone else in japan at least somewhat on the surface so far has accepted me why can't you mm -hmm. you know i'm in your country and i'm trying to learn your culture and your language and still be respectful of all that, why does it have to be, you know, the opposite? So that takes getting used to. Okay. When people come over here and you have these interactions with people, like you sit down on the train, which I rarely do, but if you sit down on the train and the person that's sitting there gets up and moves away from you, yeah, that that hits a nerve. It's like, yep. well, what's wrong with me? Why, why do you have to move? And some people, they, they're uncomfortable because they don't want to sit next to anybody. And in other cases, they don't want to sit next to a non-Japanese person because of an innate fear of the unknown. They don't know anything about you. So sometimes it comes off as being somewhat racist and standoffish. And sometimes it's mainly because they don't know anything about you and your culture. It's easier for them to not interact with it and deal with it than to actually deal with it. Mm. And that happens in entertainment as well. So what's also the flip side in, in terms of the positive, right? Being yeah. a black person, you know, being visible in Japan in that industry, like what are some of the, the uh, advantages or benefits that you've seen uh, since you've been there? Since I've been here having, uh, there have been situations where it's like, you know, we're casting for this character and we want someone that has this type of physical presence, but, uh, the people who are casting for it just don't fit. And then when they meet you, it's like, oh, actually, you fit better than what we had in mind. You interested in the job? It's like, cool, done. Um, there have been situations where you'll have, say, you'll be in a bar. <laughs> well, you know, when that was normal. Uh, <laughs> you'll be in a bar and you'll have a group of friends having a conversation and then someone comes up and they go to pick a fight. <laughs> For whatever reason, though, people get drunk and act silly. And then when you walk up and it's like you do something really subtle. And usually you shouldn't do it, but you do something really subtle like, hey, it's okay. Whatever it is, just talk it out. Let me get your drink. Yeah. This little hand gesture on their shoulder to like, oh, oh, uh, okay, uh, I, I'm sorry. And it's like you're not trying to hurt anybody. Okay. You're not, you know, trying to physically impose on anybody. But Japanese people don't do that. So when, uh -huh. when you're physically comfortable with being able to come up to someone and say, hey, it's okay, talk it out. Then they're like, oh, maybe I was acting rash. Mm. And then you find that you meet some really good people in some of the weirdest situations. You know, helping some old lady cross the street because everyone else is standing there just watches instead of helping because no one wants to take responsibility and mm -hmm. not and that's not necessarily negative, it's a cultural thing. But being from outside Japan <laughs> and going up and it's like, hey, you know, let me help you. And seeing that person's face, being shocked that you took the time to help, but also being happy that someone who's not from Japan took a moment to help me. Yeah. Thank you so much. And you find that that person ends up being 
someone you keep as a friend for a long time. Ah, okay, okay. And I really like that. So tell me, like, what are some things, like other movies and projects you've worked on since being in Japan? Um, well, there's a lot of movies I've worked on in Japan. Some of your some favorites? Of, some of my favorites? Yeah, that's a loaded question. <laughs> um, I would definitely say one of my favorites to work on for the action sequences and the director was Kamen Rider. Okay. I actually played a dragon in, uh, oh. in a Kamen Rider movie. Mm -hmm. And the title is super long. It's Kamen Rider Foze, Foze mm -hmm. and X Mega Movie Max. It's super long. But anyways, if you look it up on INDB, you'll see it. But it was fun because I got to play a character that wasn't similar to the commercials and other productions I had been in. Mm -hmm. I got to do some action. And the director actually was the action director for... Um, Power Rangers in the States. Ah! So, I mean, it was like a, a partial dream come true, man. It was awesome. Nice. Um, so, again, yeah. Shimoto san, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, other movies that I worked on that I had an interesting experience was um, uh, As the Wind Blows, Kazega Suke Okay, okay. And basically, it's an Ekiden or a marathon movie. So, here in Japan, Every New Year's, they have a um, marathon for all the universities. And I was the only person of color on the team mm -hmm. playing a African, which, you know, because every role I've been in, or a lot of the roles I've been in, I've either been um, Cuban, or as they put, somewhat Cuban, mm -hmm. Portuguese, African, uh, German, Mm -hmm. And I played an American maybe twice. Okay. Uh, with the exception of Obama. I did play, portray ah. Obama f when he was, right before his election, which was interesting. Ah, okay. But uh, the Ekiden movie was basically us portraying, and it, me portraying an international student, coming over to Japan, studying, and being a strong runner. Okay. The downside was that was a year-long shoot. We shot every season. <laughs> with thin track clothing for those uh, who don't know so winter time was brutal mm -hmm. and i had to lose weight for those who know me i'm not that big but losing weight for that to look more like the character i'm all for it but when the director's like yeah he'll have half the portions of everyone else on the team bro i was hurting <laughs> i was hurting it's like i need food but uh I became good friends with the on on kitchen staff, so they passed me food at night. And I'm sitting there, and he's like, the, "My my the rules they gave me were stop working out. Mm -hmm. It was getting too big and mm -hmm. too cut, wow. and stop eating." Wow. Yeah, that didn't happen. I was in my room, push ups, dips, sit ups, and eating everything in sight. Oh, so no, they know. No, they know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because oh, the director caught it. Um, we had a day where. We thought we were done filming, and the director was like, okay, you guys can go back. I was like, oh, cool. And we kind of went a little too far. We we're drinking and eating everything in sight. Yeah. And come 4 o'clock, it's like, okay, time for practice. Like, it's 4.30 in the morning. It's like, yep. Go out and do, uh, go out and, what was it, run a kilometer or five kilometers? Yeah, everybody, by the end of it, everybody was like puking on the side. Okay. It's like, okay, I'm going to stop eating so much now. Okay, okay. But it was a good experience. More recently, Biohazard, Resident Evil. So I did Resident Evil Vendetta and uh, Infinite Darkness, which both were on, both are on Netflix and or Amazon. Motion capture and stuff like that, but it was just fun. Doing those in video games like um, Metal Gear Solid Five. Mm -hmm. that was definitely, definitely a fun experience. I enjoyed those. Okay, okay. What about other projects that you've done, like other things that you like doing? You act and you also produce and some I produce mm -hmm. um, uh, design. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of design work. And designs would be anything from logos to designs that are actually in graphics used in a feature. Mm -hmm. So, Sergio Simpson's Sound and Fury. Okay. I worked with um, Dayart and Arthel, who's one of my closest friends out here. Uh, I tend to do work with them a lot on different projects. One of them was uh, Sound and Fury. I saw that, really good, really oh, good thank stuff. You. Thank mm -hmm. you, thank you. Uh, one of the features that we worked on 
I have designs littered everywhere mm -hmm. in that uh, video. Okay. And I loved it because it was a good challenge um, to do something different, but also to work with Arthel again because we work together a lot, but if I'm not designing something, I'm doing voice acting for his projects, mm -hmm. which I have a blast doing. So working on that, um, there's one other project I worked on, but I can't say anything about it. Okay. Um, con uh, NDA, but it was a it was a really interesting experience. I'll mm. say that. And uh, working on toys, like I was the concept designer for Kotobukiya when we did the Killing Joke Joker, which got released several years ago, sold out practically as soon as they released it. Mm. Uh, that and um, Deathstroke, which came shortly after that uh, Hot Toys <clears throat> I designed uh, a couple things for their events one was a Captain, original Captain America shield um, let's see an Iron Man suit that was the Adat light armor which was designed with the inspiration of Tron mm -hmm. before they did their versions of it um, putting that out there because they <laughs> did some recently I'm like you basically made my man. Wow. Um, and uh, Batman, which was one of my favorites because at that time you had uh, BVS, mm -hmm. Batman v Superman coming out. And the idea and the concept that I had behind it was that Superman used Superman um, Kryptonian technology to help build a suit for Batman to enhance protection and power form fighting against dark side mm. I get deep into that kind of stuff but anytime I do a design there's a deeper thinking behind it mm. so doing design work like that has definitely been fun oh and uh, I made an original Gundam for Bandai oh. which, is, which was pretty cool okay because um, I haven't seen a full <laughs> Gundam movie yet and I know people are going to, like, burn me at the stake. And it's not because I don't like Gundam. Uh, I just never got the chance to finish. So, I, like, I get started. Mm -hmm. And something would always come up. And I could never finish the film. Okay, and it's okay. like, okay, I'll go back and watch it. And then something else would come up. Uh, but uh, I will get around to finishing the original. And the most recent one that came out, I think it's called Hawthorne. I want to see just because... What's, what's something that people don't know about you that you can put out there? Uh, I'm a huge geek, <laughs> especially for pop culture. Anything, um, I guess, DC, Marvel, Image, or Star Wars related, I'm all over it. Um, the creation of the characters and storylines I really like. So given, you know, when I was a kid, people were like, oh, comic books are for kids and stuff like that, which mm -hmm. I never agree with. They're written by adults. And... You know, they're meant as an escape for what's going on at that time, but they they can also be informative. Mm. So, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, I like the idea that one person came up with this small concept or this small idea and it became something greater because that's architecture, mm -hmm. um, that's cars, that's medicine, that's things that we use that we take for granted and people that are our neighbors or whatever everything around us has a purpose mm. everything around us came from somebody or a group of people and I just love that about us it's, it's a beautiful thing and I like that because of entertainment you get to interact with people who are not just as creative as you but creative in different ways and you learn something um, things that people don't know about me, I love music. I okay. love um, putting music and things together, but I'm not a composer. I don't play instruments anymore. Um, mm -hmm. My grandfather tried teaching me, and <laughs> bless his soul, he was really good at it. I just didn't have the patience for it, and I, I thought he was being mean, but he was just trying to get me to stay focused. Okay. So he inadvertently pushed me back into martial arts. And I love martial arts. Okay, so so which one of the arts? So um, I've studied kung fu, muay thai, a little bit of judo, and uh, jeet kune do. Um, and here in Japan, shonin jin kenpo. 
and I love it. When I first got here, I was studying Jeet Kune Do and Shonenji Kenpo at the same time. So the same week, I'd have four lessons to a piece, mm -hmm. and it was one of the best times of my life. Okay. Um, downside is when I started entertainment, agencies were like, hey, can't get hit, can't be getting scratches and stuff like that all over your face and so on and so forth. So a lot of stuff that I was doing and trying to learn, like grappling and MMA, just for action purposes, not because I don't want to do UFC or Pride and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I had to cut back and stop, which was really bad because I really enjoyed it. I felt more balanced doing martial arts and stuff like that. Martial arts has always been a part of my life. Okay. So slowly getting back into it has been fun and a new kind of challenge. Finding that you're flexible in ways you weren't before and less flexible <laughs> in ways that you used to be. Um, being physically strong has always been uh, something I was given from my parents, but also learning how to be more fluid with things mm -hmm. has been challenging. Mm -hmm. um, weapons. Learning weapons is really, really fun and super challenging. One of the things that people don't know is I did a drama, I want to say back in 2009, 2010, where I'm using a naginata. Mm -hmm. And uh, Naginata is basically a, usually it's a one-bladed spear, and it's the giant, the, the spear is, the blade of it is almost like a sickle, so it comes up almost mm. in a, a, a half circle. But the kind that I used for reduction I was on, which was two meters long, was double-bladed. Ah. And I kid you not, learning that by itself is a challenge, but having to use that during the shoot with a giant wooden mask that's like weighing down in your face so you can barely see mm -hmm. oh my goodness nerve-wracking okay because i'm thinking i don't want to you know accidentally hit the other actor with it because when we're doing our action sequences we're actually hitting weapons to weapons and things of that nature so it was exciting and scary at the same time Okay. So when you started out, right, did you speak mm -hmm. Japanese? No. So tell no, me about that I progress. Could say... yeah, tell, me, tell me about that and like how you became uh, conversationally fluent in Japanese. <laughs> Still not conversationally fluent in Japanese. Still learning every okay. day. Um, there's a lot of vocabulary that you find that within this circle of people, mm -hmm. there's certain words and phrases that they use every day that you just pick up because of those situations. So I'd say I learned. I know more situational Japanese mm. in certain situations. Um, some of it's transferable, some of it's not. When I first came here, the family that I was um, with back in the States, Japanese family, that was trying to help me with learning Japanese things in nature um, and bless them because they're amazing people, um, the Kawanos. Um, they gave me a little book to study and stuff like that and I would study it. But I didn't really have anyone to pair off of okay. after getting here. Mm -hmm. Because the idea, you know, me trying to be the smart one, let me live in Kyoto or the countryside where there's no one that speaks English, so I'm forced to learn the language, was the thinking. Okay. Lo and behold, everyone around me spoke English. <laughs> Every production I went on, English speaking staff. So I ended up basically going to my comfort zone and speaking in English because it was available. Okay, understood. Which unfortunately didn't do me any favors. Mm. Um, but picking up the language, a lot of it was from scripts. Um, having uh, dinner or lunch with, you know, one or two people, if not other cast members. Utara Hikuru. I kid you not, my absolute all-time favorite Japanese artist from what the year 2000 uh, up till now helped me learn a lot of simple things in Japanese um, just the way she wrote the lyrics I may not have understood but the style and the tone really hit with me and I was like wow that's interesting let me look this up mm -hmm. then we'll look it up and say oh well, that's what it means. oh okay and then I try and use it I'm still learning honestly because when I first got here, a lot of the productions and things, given they were Japanese productions, maybe in Japan, 
English speaking staff or we would film outside Japan. So I had no use for speaking in mm. Japanese. Then when I when things started to change and go more towards studio work, I had to learn to speak more Japanese or I was specifically told not to learn more. Because the more I would learn, the natural reaction that I would have to it wouldn't stand out so much. Ah, and that was the thing at the time. Okay. So it, it made it more difficult because personality wise, I want to learn. I want to know. So forcing myself not to learn too fast was a challenge. And then also, I'd go through periods where it's like, I want to learn. And then I get frustrated and it's like, let me stop. I need a break. Okay. Okay. All right. So now you would say you are situationally fluent in Japanese. Right? Yeah. I mean, if I need to speak in Japanese for uh, for work, yeah, yeah, it's no problem. Okay. Really. You know, but just like in English, you have good days, you have bad days. Some days, Japanese comes out so smooth and so eloquent, and you have days like nothing sticking. <laughs> Why can't I remember, you know, uh, the the word for station or whatever? Yeah. You know, given obviously it's eki, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So, okay, what would you say your black experience in Japan has been like since you've been here for, what, six, 15, 16 years? So, off and on, um, and that's mainly been because of the contract with SoftBank, I would say it's been a mixed bag, both positive and negative. Uh, negative because you have stereotypes that people are used to mm -hmm. and can't see past because of lack of exposure. And having to get used to that and teach people new things at first is frustrating but then at the same time it's nice because you learn to think outside of how you were brought up okay. and see from another person's uh, perspective so taking negatives and turning it into positives is something I'm all about doing especially when I'm working okay having situations where it's like hey we want to put a a pie in your face because it's got white cream we think will look good with the contrast of your skin that's not going to happen mm -hmm. and that's I've been approached for a project like, it's like no but you know what we can do something else that would be just as entertaining and giving them a different spin on things is always good because then they get to learn something mm -hmm. so I'd say my black experience in Japan has been for the most part positive people okay. have been mostly uh, very open and caring and, and kind you have a few people where it's like a few knuckleheads, but you know, there's more to life than just that small group of people or that situation. Indeed. So all in all, I'd say it's been fairly good. It could be better. Um, and people could take the time to learn more about a culture that they want to expose or they want to share. <laughs> um, they just need to take the time to do it. So yeah, we still have situations where you'll have a TV show that wants to do blackface or you'll have someone who does something where, hey, we want to cast a, you know, a, a black thug who's wearing like a big gold chain and white tank top and he speaks like this and does this. You know, if it's a story that's based in like 70s, 80s, 90s, okay, I get it. But now I'm like, there's more, come on. So there's still a little bit of a gap trying to get over and, you know, expose people to more. Okay. So what would you say to someone who is, like, what have you learned being in the industry for so long? So you've been here for how long again? So, I've, so this will be my 15th year um, okay. in total. Not all here, but mostly 15. Okay. So, like, what have you learned? I've learned to be more open-minded. Like, I've always been an open-minded person, but... To be more open-minded and more forgiving mm -hmm. of people who don't know okay. or don't understand. Because it can be jarring. It can be frustrating. It can be angering for a lot of people. Um, I've learned to be patient with myself when it comes to trying to learn the language. Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to written. Because writing in Japanese and speaking in Japanese are two different animals. Um, but also, you know, reminding friends and our family that come to visit, you're not in your home country. So you may not have those comfort foods. You may not be able to 
you know, go and do this. Well, well, my country, I could do this. You're not in your country. Those things aren't available to us. But there are other options. You know, being in other countries, people can become depressed and frustrated. And when you feel like that, talk to somebody. When you feel like there's no one from your community, in your community, you have access to the internet. You have access to your local community centers and things of that nature. There is someone around who's going through the same thing you are or has been through the same thing you are. And there's better ways and more positive ways to deal with that stress and frustration. Because <clears throat> it does happen a lot here when people get here. And a lot of foreign women that come over to Japan, I feel they tend to have a harder time with how people treat them than we do. Okay. Culturally. And it can be very, very hard. Um, but, you know, there's, there's someone out there that you can talk to. They are available. And I'd say if you're coming over here to do any type of entertainment, um, your teaching, doesn't matter. Keep that in mind. Okay. Definitely. So what about advice for someone that wants to break into the same industry you're in, like the entertainment industry, to become an actor mm. in Japan? Any advice that you can impart to them that you think would help them to not face some of the challenges that you faced when you came? Well, I look at it like this. Everybody's going to face some of the similar challenges because it's the entertainment business. Okay. That's, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But everyone's interaction is not going to be the same. So what worked for me may not work for the next person True. and that's okay so like I did a uh, live interview with CNN here in Hachiko okay and we actually walked from the station there all the way back there was a basketball street and around mm -hmm. and watching the reaction of people around us was great now I've had interviews with other people and other talent where we've walked and they don't get that reaction it doesn't mean that they don't have the same impact but every interaction is different mm. so as far as coming over here and having expectations I'd say have have a plan of what you want to set out to do and if you're looking for an agency look for an agency that fits you not for an agency that you fit uh, okay, okay okay because that is a big deciding factor in how you progress and learn things within the business and within your project. Don't try and do what the next person is doing. Mm, yes. And I would say that not just for coming to Japan, but anywhere. If you're going to be getting an entertainment outside in the US mm -hmm. or in Europe, do your own thing. Because if you fit the same slate as the next five people, there's nothing about you that stands out. Indeed. And they're not going to choose you for whatever said project is. You know, of course, casting calls, hey, we're looking for a black male from the ages of uh, uh, 24 to 42 or whatever it is. Okay, that's very general. So when you go in and you have your audition, do something that sets yourself apart from everybody else. Indeed. Okay, so what would, be the, what would be the first thing for that person to do? You come to Japan, mm -hmm. you look for agencies or what? Well, the first thing I would do is definitely look at agencies. Um, mm -hmm. Or if there's a person in particular that's like, hey, I saw this person in a movie or a TV show or whatever it is, look them up. Okay, what agency are they with? Then research that agency. Not just see what other talent is there, but see what that agency is promoting or not promoting to see if it's maybe something you want to do. But also, don't let that deter you. Hey, this agency doesn't have this type of um, promotion or talent. And, but that's what I do. That could work in your favor. Because that could be something where it's like the agency didn't have it or do it because no one's available with that skill set. Mm. But you have that skill set. So now you are different and you set yourself apart from everyone else. And you've brought value of a different sort to that agency. So agency is like, let me find you some work. Ah, uh, nice. Something to keep in mind. You work for agencies here in Japan, not the other way around. So back home, you get picked up by a management company or agency or whatever, and they're doing everything they can to book as much work for you because that's where they're going to make their money. Mm -hmm. 
that's the same here but if the agency is like hey you're doing this job it's like well actually i don't want to do that like okay you're fired and that's it now you gotta look for another agency wow now that can happen stateside but the dynamic is very different so stateside you'll have the same thing so like if you have if you have someone that's made a name for themselves um agency is usually not going to be so quick to be like oh well we'll just find someone else unless you did something horribly wrong which you know within the culture of cancellation <laughs> <laughs> terms of culture <laughs> that could be a number of things but if you do something that affects someone in that way obviously they're going to drop you like a hot potato so to speak so now we're heading to your favorite food spot in tokyo so yes one of mm -hmm. my favorite food spots here in tokyo is called smokehouse it's mm -hmm. part of the ty harbor uh, restaurant group mm -hmm. so they have several different locations but each location is a different theme and restaurant for example um, smokehouse is like uh, american style barbecue where ty harbor which is where they start yes yeah, turn here ty harbor which is where they started is where they brew all of their own beers for mm -hmm. all the establishments and uh, they've got seafood and a little barbecue stuff like that but it's a little more upscale where this one is more casual everyday food salads sandwiches burgers whatever one of the things i like about it is it's always chill relaxing atmosphere the staff is fantastic um, which is a big thing for me you know you could have food that is phenomenal but if the staff customer service is bad i'll never go back okay um I'll, I'll give the place two chances the first try something happened maybe it was a bad day if i go back and the experience is again that bad mm -hmm. i'm done why i'm not going to waste my money okay. i'm very kbc <laughs> okay one thing i wanted to ask you about sure. um is uh Sesame Street, right? Because I didn't read an article where you yes. got it, you got a spot where your parents so, had to move. Yeah, so when I was a kid, there was auditioning and had auditioned and basically was selected for um, the show. But mm -hmm. at the same time, my parents' job was transferred overseas. So obviously couldn't take it. Um, missed opportunity, but at the same time, I'm happy because I learned a lot about the world, myself, family, and other countries. This is it here. Um, ah, here we by are. living overseas. So downstairs is their roastery. So basically it's uh, kind of like a coffee shop. Mm -hmm. It's nice if you're traveling, it's perfect because there's free Wi-Fi and all that kind of stuff. But upstairs is the actual restaurant. Another reason I like this area because it's attached to one of my favorite brands, which is Ralph Lauren. Um, all right. One of my favorite brands because I can find clothes in my size, <laughs> nice. which is hard to do. So that's their billboard with the giant burger on the front of it. But I mean, there's more to the menu, but this right here is just like simple appetizer salads. There are barbecue single plates, all that kind of stuff. And it's good. It's quick, easy dining. You can pretty much come here anytime, big business meeting, little business meeting, or interviews. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually hungry myself, so I can't wait to see it. I'm looking for a steak, maybe a steak or... Uh, could, uh, they may have steak on the menu. And barbecue, not, barbecue ribs? Barbecue, definitely. Okay. Uh, ribs, definitely. Okay, uh, that's what I, I think I'll get. If you like pork, then their pulled pork sandwiches are... Okay, okay. Fantastic. Konnichiwa. Genki. Mochidon, mochidon. Ah, thank so who's the inspiration for acting like who's the inspiration inspirations for acting mm -hmm. um i'd say it it varies there are quite a few but it would also depend on if it's project related like say this genre of film or uh that kind of thing but in general uh denzel washington hands down is one of my absolute favorite actors to watch mm -hmm. and study just because it's amazing He's one of those actors where it's like, you have actors that have things come out like projects two, three times a year, which isn't bad. It means they're busy and it can be good. But again, he said something in an interview with Jamie Foxx and it was more along the lines of, he doesn't need to have the quantity. 
he's more about the quality. Mm. So he could have something come out every two, three years, people will definitely still be going to see it. And be like, hey, take my money, I gotta go see it again. Or you could have the method of, hey, I've got three movies coming out over the course of a year and a half. That works for that person. But mm -hmm. for him, he wants more, he, he likes stories that have depth to it and where he can actually dive so deep into that role that <clears throat> when he's done with it, he could have that two year palate cleanse and do something else. So outside of all that, he's one of my favorite actors to watch. Um, I like Will Smith because of his transition from music into film. Mm -hmm. And then even within film, his acting has just evolved into so many different things and in so many ways from when he started. It's like, it's hard not to respect someone who did something like that. True. Um, I like The Rock. I like The Rock and Henry Cavill because of their charisma. Uh, the Rock has charisma and just this energy about him that it's infectious. You know, he could walk into a room and people just immediately change, but it's the way he treats people. Mm. On and off camera. So, I really enjoy that. I had one very small interaction where I got the chance to meet him for like two seconds and it was like, I understand. I, I get it. <laughs> um, Henry Cavill, uh, because he, listening to his interviews and things before where he used to be the quote unquote chubby kid, as he put it, in school and being told, well, there's no way you could do this. There's no way you could do that. The way he found his way through the things that were adverse in his life to become the actor that he is now. It's like, wow, that's really cool. And now he's playing The Witcher. It was like, yeah, I mean, he went from, you know, auditioning for James Bond and uh, Superman before getting the role of Superman now. And he has his own series coming up again. Mm -hmm. He had The Witcher and then there's a follow-up season coming up. It's like, he's done a lot for himself. You know, and it's it's really nice seeing other artists out there who have dealt with life mm -hmm. and turned it into a positive. Mm -hmm. So people like that, Lawrence Fishburne, they they really stick with me. What about in Japan? Is there something mm -hmm. that you want to do in the industry as a black person in Japan that you haven't done yet? There's a lot. Um, I wouldn't sit necessarily isolate it to Japan, okay. but I would say if it's in Japan, being the star of an action series or action movie mm -hmm. um, with an international cast, with a mixed cast. Mm -hmm. Because the idea of it just being Japanese and me being the one-off or one of a handful of people, unless the story is deep, mm -hmm. it'll just be like another project. Um, and the reason I say series or movie because with a series you can kind of flesh out a story, mm -hmm. characters, name, nature. So it wouldn't be just my character, it would be like the main cast, you get to learn about them and do stuff with them and interact. If it's a film, I need it to be a joint collaboration, not just Japanese, mm -hmm. um, but mixed with Hollywood or production from Europe, I think would be an interesting mix. Okay. Kind of like um, Lupo the one that's on Netflix now. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Okay. The, the, that really made me happy because the main character looks very different. Yeah, indeed. Um, and I love that he is, I don't know if that he is not just different visually, <laughs> but his acting is mm -hmm. different from the character that people are used to in the animated mm -hmm. series. Okay. So he made it his own. I love projects like that. I want to do more projects like that. Mm. So, so what are we looking at? Playing a, um, well, definitely. Uh, oh, two oh, seconds. I was saying, what are we looking at? Let's get last thing for. Amen. So, what are we looking at? Food wise. Ah, so yeah. food wise, this is the uh, Texas chili mm -hmm. here at Smokehouse. Okay. Um, is corn, is said, this cornbread on the side? Sorry. Yes, it's cornbread on the oh. side. Okay. So. They said the Texas chili from its original version, which was actually uh, brisket or chunks of beef only, the newer version has a mix of both beef and pork, um, uh, pulled pork mixed in it. 
which is a first for me because I haven't had it this way before. But uh, I always pray before my meals, which is why I stop for a moment. And then also, um, food is hot. And I have what they say in Japanese, nekojita, which is uh, a <laughs> sensitive tongue. tongue. A sensitive tongue. <laughs> it's very true. So I will take a moment before I start digging into mine, but I am just as hungry as he looks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say having more productions like Netflix or Amazon, mm -hmm. having a series where the content is more of an international feel or more of a mixed feel, so you have Japanese talent mixing with um, non-Japanese talent for a story that could be told in Japan and or outside Japan. Mm. More content like that that transcends the typical norms would be interesting. So mm -hmm. I want to change that and I want to do more projects like that here in Japan. What's one thing about acting that people don't know about? Like for instance, mm. on the outside, like myself yeah. looking in, mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of fun. It is. Yeah. But what is there that people, someone that's not an actor mm. wouldn't know? Before answering, I'll say this. There's a slight difference in Japan. Mm -hmm. You'll get projects a couple weeks out and you know on the service like oh wow that's great you know I, I've got a job it is but the one thing that's missing that tends to be somewhat normal outside is prep time so you get time before the project uh, be it TV series or film to where you can actually create your character mm -hmm. change its mindset mannerisms things of that nature those things, yeah, obviously they take practice, but you want that time to prep, so when you do it, you don't look the same as the previous project. Mm. You don't act the same as the previous project, because then you're just playing yourself. You just change clothes. Well, given, that in itself is hard to do. Any actor knows it, but you have actors that are out there that are so good at doing it. But you also find that it takes practice. Mm -hmm. you gotta, you got to practice, whether it's in the mirror, um, it's spitting lines with someone else. doesn't matter. you got to practice, mm -hmm. and that's important. Um, one of the series that I watched recently, Mar of East Town, mm -hmm. and I'm watching it, and basically it's uh, Kate Winslet as the main character. But she does such a good job of that character where you forget that's Kate Winslet. It's that character, Mark. Mm -hmm. And the story and the storytelling for it is interesting enough to get anyone interested in finding out what's going to happen next. Because it's kind of like a, a, a crime drama. Mm -hmm. But her character, she plays such a damaged and tortured person to the point where you really believe that happened to her. Well, and it's hard to do that. So I, I guess saying some of the projects that Kate Winslet and Jason Momoa, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I like actors like that. Now, given that the actors that I've mentioned have been thespians where it's like, oh, deep, rich, and more recent, but I like that range. Mm. I like being able to say, hey, this actor was really good in Game of Thrones, oh, but now he's Aquaman, but he's also playing, you know, a frontiersman in this 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 drama and they're different people so acting itself is mm -hmm. I have to say it's one of my absolute favorite jobs because being able to go back in time and play a character from like the 1800s or mm -hmm. 1700s to the future or mm -hmm. say it was, you know playing somebody from the 70s being able to jump through time and concepts things like that is fun because you get to learn about what it was like at that time period, whether it be technology or lack of technology, <laughs> what was considered useful at the time, mm. you know, how we interact with each other. So it's like talking to talking to a lady that I may be interested in, the approach from, say, the 1700s is very different from now. Wow. Mm. Words hold weight. Mm. And it's not just how it's written or how it's said, but what it means. Mm. All those things I, I, I love. What's the difficult part that an onlooker might not uh, appreciate because they're not acquainted mm -hmm. with it? Okay. Like it's a prep time maybe, some of the stuff like losing weight or... Oh yeah, definitely. So like, one of the things that people tend to jump on immediately, casting. 
And I say this because you'll have someone who's like, oh, well, we're looking at this person, we're going to cast um, this person as that character. Oh, they're too skinny. Mm. Or they're too fat. They're too this, they're too that. It's like when they cast you mm -hmm. and when you shoot, there's a time gap. So they have time to prep, to portray said character, or maybe the director has an image that doesn't fit the same image of what you're used to mm -hmm. because it's the director's interpretation. Mm -hmm. It can be positive or negative, but it's that director's interpretation. So wait till it comes out. I'm like this. The, the toxic reaction to, oh, why would you cast that person? That's not who I cast. Okay, may not be the person that you cast, but that person still was hired for a job. Let's see what they do with it. You know, you may not like it, and if you don't like it, that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay to not like the same thing that everyone else does. But at least give that person a chance to do it. Because when you jump on them, and you know, in some cases, you cancel them before that starts, at the end of the day, that person still has a family to feed. Mm. That person is still put in the time to do the best of their ability of what they were trying to portray. And it's it's hard to recover from that. Mm -hmm. So like um, one of the one of the actors who unfortunately just got destroyed, he portrayed Jar Jar Brinks in Star Wars. Okay. Okay. Uh, from what's been said is came to a point where he considered suicide mm -hmm. because death threats and the way people were treating him it's just just unfortunate happenstance of what he ended up portraying mm -hmm. now put that aside and you look at any other feature like uh, Heath Ledger Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker in Christopher Nolan's uh, Batman and people were oh why would you cast him? he can't do it he can't do it uh, he won an award he ended up being one of the best portrayals of that character to date on screen. Why? Because he was given a chance. Mm. Give someone a chance to do the job that they're hired for. Don't just cancel it. Mm. So I think people, if they were a bit more open-minded from the start, I think we would have a, a better societal communication not just in entertainment, mm -hmm. but as a whole. But since we're talking about entertainment, I think people would actually enjoy it more. And hey, if again, if it comes out, you don't like it, it's okay. You still have the sources that you were looking at and you enjoyed before that, you can still enjoy them. Okay. Where can people, well, I guess people can just, people can type your name into Google and find you, but where can they find you online? And what should people look out for next from Dante Carver? Okay. Um, I'd say uh, Instagram. Uh, I think I use that more than anything just because it's easy plug mm -hmm. and play. Uh, Dante Carver Official. Mm -hmm. um, I have a secondary Instagram account which is the number two, DC Sun. And DC Sun is my artist name, but also my, when I do designs, but also my design company name. Mm -hmm. um, I had Ad at Designs, but I don't use it anymore has been rebranded as DC Sun. Mm -hmm. And DC Sun is spelled with an S-A-N or the number three, because in Japanese, three is sign. But also showing three different sides of me. Mm. I have a YouTube channel. Um, it's uh, DC Sun. But I haven't uploaded anything in about two months, <laughs> okay. just because, um, one, everybody knows COVID, but also mm -hmm. work-wise, I was filming a movie and uh, we we're on several different locations, so I really couldn't upload anything. Um, so that made it difficult. But you can see content on there from before, and I'll have stuff up there uh, within the next week or so. The next film that I'll be in, that'll be released, uh, is Confidence Man JP, which is kind of like a ocean, Japanese version of like Ocean's Eleven. Okay, kind of okay, cool, cool. Uh, and then I would say Biohazard, uh, sorry, Japanese title, Resident Evil, um, Infinite Darkness, and Vendetta. Vendetta, my character's actually in it. The character's name is DC. Mm -hmm. He's from Brooklyn. Okay. 
little, <laughs> little soft nudge. Also, logo that's on the group design that. Um, company design that also. And then uh, Infinite Darkness, actually playing several different characters. I'm one of the main uh, motion capture actors for the series. There's more stuff, but I can't say it at the time. Mm -hmm. But keep on a lookout on my Insta, because uh, I do post there. Um, yeah. Mm. All right, all right. I'm an ambassador for a uh, mattress company here. Oh, no? Um, it, which is funny. But what's the name of it? Goo Goo. G U G U. If you. Not joking. It is some of the best sleep I've had in a long time. Okay. I didn't, you know, when they told me about it, I was like, okay, it's another gimmick kind of thing. Mm -hmm. No, I've had a really good night's sleep. You know, it may not be for everybody, mm -hmm. but it's definitely worked for me and people around me so far. So if you're ever interested in trying out a mattress or getting the mattress, and they have all sizes, um, put my name in as the code D-A-N-T-E, mm -hmm. and you'll get 20% off. Okay. And uh, it is worth, you, you forget within entertainment because you're working and going from one place to another, sometimes you forget to sleep. And sleep is a big part of, uh, I don't know, some, uh, oh. uh, sleep is a big part of um, nice. what you need to function. Mm -hmm. oh, some, uh, uh, cut it. Ooh. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we just got the uh, entrees. You gotta show them. So he got the pulled pork sandwich. So it came with coleslaw, pulled pork, and um, uh, potato salad, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Then I got the Carolina burger. So it just looks like a normal burger, but it's got pulled pork and some other special fixings on it, mm -hmm. curly fries. It does come with uh, fried mac and cheese, which is usually on the burger, but... Is that mine or yours? Yeah, that's yours. Oh. But I don't need all that. <laughs> uh, this is the most that I've had in a while, and it's gonna be good, but yeah. Okay, okay. So I'd say work-wise, things that you can see me physically on things that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. If it's something behind the scenes, I'd say Sturgis Simpson's um, Sound and Fury, mm -hmm. um, Shoujo no Piero, which is the short that I did with Arthel and Day Art. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot of little things popping up here and there. So I'd say, uh, yeah, just look at the social media, I'll post it. So guys, so there you have it. This was Dante Carver, right? Eating the, uh, what's this again? Sorry about that, eating on camera. Um, <laughs> eating the Texas chili and the Carolina burger, okay. eventually, with a rhubarb soda, raspberry rhubarb soda. It looks good. It, it, it is. It's, it's, it's not something I would have all the time. Another reason for just getting it. I think I'll get one of it as well. Yeah. Yeah. The only uh, thing they're missing is applesauce. <laughs> I love applesauce. All right, so guys, there you have it. This was Dante Carver. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe to this channel for thank you, thank you. more videos like this on the Black Experience in Japan. Until next time, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, whatever, feel free to DM me on Instagram and or YouTube and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear back from you guys as well. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for the time today. No problem. All right. Until next time. Bye for now. Hello, Saimas. Saimas, sir. Thank you. 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 Be yourself. You know, you have big dreams and big goals. Don't give up on them. You know, you're going to have people that are going to doubt you. Look at them as your support because your real supporters will always be there. But the people that doubt you will do any and everything that they can to see you fail. That should be your motivation to do just the opposite. If you are a family person like I am, treasure them as much and as long as you can because they're important. Work is important, money is important, family's first. 
I love my family in every form, whether it be by blood, marriage, uh, friendships, you know, that's my family. Thanks for uh, taking the time to watch and uh, supporting the Black Experience Japan. And thank you for tuning in to hear my little story. Hopefully see some of you or get to work with you sometime soon.